pandemic got us into a reflective space and made us look inward to see what we can do for the world at large. As a self-expression coach, I became a catalyst for women and started Vani, a one-on-one coaching program for women on finding their voice, to speak up, to be visible. As a storyteller, I spotted that there were many ordinary people amongst us leading extraordinary lives, making a difference to the world, and they needed to be heard. Thus was born You and I with Rashmi Shetty, where amazing personal journeys with their uniqueness and individuality are showcased. A reaffirmation of the fact that Open your eyes wider. The world is far more beautiful when we acknowledge the presence of both you and I. November 7th is National Cancer Awareness Day and keeping this in mind, we have a very special guest today. Professor Shashanka Mohan Bose, former senior professor and head of surgery, joint medical superintendent and officer in charge of the emergency department of PGI Chandigarh, one of the most well-known and eminent surgeons of India. He has been serving the country for about 55 years. His vast experience and expertise have made him a popular figure. He has been the first one in northern India to start pioneering work in breast conservation surgery, neoadjuvant chemotherapy for breast cancer, first one in PGI to start laparoscopic surgery, mini cholecystectomy, stapler hemorrhoidectomy. He is the first one in the country to initiate non-operative management of hemoperitoneum due to abdominal injuries. Professor Bose is a real blend of excellence in patient care, teaching and research, the three arms of medical science and has received recognition in all three. He is a popular medical teacher and has delivered lectures all over the country and has been a visiting professor at a number of foreign universities. Dr. Bose is one of the highest decorated surgeons in the country having received three national awards Dr B C Roy National Award as eminent medical teacher MCI's National Award for outstanding work in medical research and the National Award from the Ministry of Science and Technology for outstanding work in the sphere of communication Dr Bose is a person with multifarious interests His health education book Cancer has been published by the Government of India agency and has been already translated into seven regional languages. During the last 4 years he has published a number of books Winners of Breast Cancer Stories of Courage Grit and Courage both in English and Hindi. His autobiography Memoirs of a Surgeon Beyond Incisions Blood and Sweat has become very popular. The top publisher of the world Springer Nature has recently published his reference book Breast Cancer Comprehensive Management. Dr. Bose continues his surgical practice. Patients from far and wide continue to seek his advice and he continues to provide multimodality healthcare treatment by undertaking major surgeries, giving chemotherapy and spreading the message of cancer awareness. Listen in as Professor Shashanka Mohan Bose shares his life, interesting patient stories, and some amazing life lessons from his life. Eighty-two, age is just a number, and does not stop this passionate surgeon from a cause he so strongly believes in: patient welfare. Hello, Dr. Bose. It's such an honor. uh to have you on you and i with rashmi shetty welcome i have read so much about you and uh, i'm curious now to know whether little shashanka bose also had the dream of becoming a doctor that you turned out to be as you grew up older so take us through your journey and i'm sure it's going to be a fascinating one thank you rashmi for inviting me i'm shashank mohan bose currently living in chandigarh the city beautiful of india i am a practicing surgeon particularly 
looking after cancer cases and more specifically looking after and managing cases of breast cancer. I have been in the profession of surgery for almost 60 years. Out of that, 40 years were spent in PGI Chandigarh, one of the most prestigious medical institutes of the world. I superannuated in 2002 as senior professor and head of surgery department. I was involved in patient care, also in teaching and training of postgraduate students, doing research, and also sharing the administrative responsibilities of the institute from time to time. I belong to a middle-class Bengali family. My father, Sri Satindranath Both, was the principal of an Ayurvedic college. He was very hardworking, very honest, and used to write professional articles in journals and magazines. And I think I inherited some of his qualities and continue to write in professional journals and all. We were seven brothers and sisters. All of us were interested in studies, games, sports, cultural activities and all. But we always had a very simple life. My father thought that out of all, I was the most hardworking, very good in handiwork. And so he thought that I was the one who should become a surgeon. Although I was good in other activities also, but you know, in that era, one could not override the wishes of parents. And so from the very beginning, I thought I will go in for medicine and through that in surgery. My schooling was in Tilokchen Jain High School in Dor, where I passed in first class, first division, with distinctions in higher mathematics and science subject. And mind you, during that era, it was not easy to get 60%. But anyway, I was good in studies and I was good in games and sports, cultural activities, debates, declamation, etc. Used to represent my school in inter-school matches, in debates, and I have even won inter-school debate competitions in Indoor. After passing matriculation, I joined inter-science in Government Science College, Gwalior. There again, I was one of the six students who got first division. I think almost 3,500 students appeared in ISC from that college. And we were only three boys and three girls who got the first division. And once you get first division, it was a cakewalk to get into a medical college. On the appointed day, me and my friend Ratanlal Gupta went to deposit our application for admission in GR Medical College, which was the best medical college in MP at that time. When the seniors saw both of us, they took us to the boys hostel because they were also sure that we will get admission and they ragged us for almost two hours. But it was good because after my admission, when I and Dr. Ratanlal Gupta went to the college, we were known to all the senior people. My stay in Gwalior Medical College was very good. 
because I was good in studies, got merit scholarship from government, and I was representing college in hockey, football, table tennis, kabaddi, kho kho, and whatnot. I was also interested in extracurricular activities of any type that you could think of. I used to produce, direct, and act in dramas, and I got Best Actors Award for three continuous years in the college. Oh my God, Doctor, how were you managing sports, dramatics, elocution? You're there in everything and in studies as well. And today, parents are so focused on studies alone and pressurize the children so much. How did you manage to bring such a... I think this was balance? all management of time. I will tell you further. See, I was also taking part in the council of this college. In first year, I was the class manager. In third year, I was the secretary of the clinical society. In fourth year, I became the general secretary of the college. In fifth year, I was the president of Greater Gwalior Student Association, which included all the higher educational institutions of Gwalior. In fifth year, I also went to attain a medical college students association meeting in Vellore, Tamil Nadu. There I was elected unanimously as the president of this association. I used to play at university level. I had represented Gwalior 11 in Sindhya Gold Cup also. So I had a very smooth sailing and very good time in Gwalior Medical College. After passing MBBS, which was quite simple, and I was one of the toppers. I joined internship in the same college. Luckily for me, I was put with Dr. B. N. B. Rao, the principal of the college and who also happened to be head of surgery department. His regular house surgeon has left. So I, as an intern, took over the duties of a house surgeon. He became very fond of me. When I was about to finish my internship, he called me to his office and asked me if I wanted to become a surgeon. And when I said yes, then he said, you better get out of this college and go somewhere else for better training for a surgeon. I did not know where to go. He himself suggested, hey, you go to Chandigarh PGI, which is coming up, and see if they accept you. I came to PJ Chandigarh. It was it started in 1962 and I was appearing in the interview in the fag end of 63. Luckily, I was selected. And in spite of wishes of my parents, my friends, my teachers and everyone, I came and joined PJ Chandigarh on 1st January 1964. I was quite happy because PJ was coming up, the construction was going around all over and there were eminent people from all subjects of medicine who were coming there. Like Professor Santok Singh Anand, Tulsi Das, Chutani, Dhal, Ranjit Raj Chaudhary, BNS Walia, and you name them. C. Balakrishnan, Professor Diwan, Professor Devi, they all were coming to PGI Chandigarh and they laid down the foundation culture which is followed even now. I was really very happy to be in their company. I learned 
so much in all the subjects from them. As a matter of fact, while doing surgery, although I was posted in general surgery, but I used to attain other specialties also. Like after passing my MS as a registrar, I worked in orthopedics. I was working in plastic surgery and helping Professor CBK for dressings of burn patients. I even learned how to do a cesarean section from Professor Kamala Dhal. You will be surprised that it is not easy to learn all this, but I was very, very hard work and people used to love me. And all this came handy because when I went to Libya for a few years on Government of India deputation, foreign service deputation, I could manage cases of orthopedics, plastic surgery, and even neurosurgery. I had operated patients of depressed skull fractures. In so many years of experience, I'm sure there are some patients whose stories still remain with you. Can you share some of those, Dr. Bose? There must be hundreds of cases which I remember. But I will tell you few. One of the first patients that I had seen in PGI Chandigarh was Captain Chauhan. He was ADC to General Sparrow. And during the indo War of 1965, he was badly injured. So much so that in the field area, they wanted to amputate his lower limb. He refused and came to PGI. In PGI, I was put in charge of him. I looked after him and we were able to salvage the limb. And as a matter of fact, he got back his A category. That was one of the patients which I remember very fondly. I remember a patient who was admitted in one of the corporate hospitals of Sendiga. She was brought as a case of meningitis. But after examination, we found she had a lump in her breast. She was in coma. And this lump in the breast looked to be very suspicious for malignancy. We had fine needle aspiration cytology and it was positive. Her two sons came from USA and wanted surgery for her. The anesthesia team refused to give anesthesia to this sick patient because we did not know what was the cause of meningitis. Then there was no question of removing the entire breast. I said, yeah, I will only do the local excision of the tumor, which was agreed upon. And I started surgery under local anesthesia with some sedation. And luckily, gradually, I was able to remove the entire breast under local anesthesia. She recovered completely except that she had total loss of memory. Then later on, we gave her chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hormone therapy, and it is more than 14 or 15 years that she is fine. I also remember two young ladies of 30 years. Both of them were very good-looking, graceful ladies. They were seen by one of the surgeons in a corporate hospital, but that surgeon thought ki, these young ladies cannot have breast cancer. So they did not have any diagnostic investigation and they asked her to come back after one year. But unfortunately, after three years, both of them started finding that the lump was increasing in size. They came to me and on examination, I had no doubt that they were carrying on with breast cancer. And in both these ladies, I did the operation. I will tell you a different type of patient. A young NRI lady of 19 years was operated upon by my chief, Professor Anand, 
for a pilonidal sinus, which is a wound at the tail end of the spine. I was the registrar in charge of the patient. One day in the evening round, I found that she was crying. I asked her, do you have pain? She said, no. But she would not tell me to why she was. But I insisted. And then she told me her local guardian, who was minister of Punjab, used to visit her every day in the evening and will take liberties with her misbehavior. And she was expecting him to be coming to the ward after half an hour and she did not want him to visit her. I did not know what to do because this was a political heavyweight, but I thought I must do something to help my patient. I was walking in the corridor and I saw this minister with his chamchas and I told him, he said, you are not going in that room. He told me, do you know who am I? I said, yes, I know who you are, but you will not go. And if you go, I will complain to my director and you know what will happen to me. Because it was very well known. Our director was a very straightforward person and he would not tolerate any hand. He left the ward and that was the end of this. I also remember another young NRI lady who was studying in Punjab University. This was my third year of registration. I was working in cardiothoracic surgery unit. One day I was just walking in front of the emergency department and I found the warden of that girl's hostel and the prefect of that girl's hostel. They came to me and they said, hey, patient A is admitted in the emergency. You come and see that patient. I said, no, no, how can I go and interfere in a emergency ward of a general surgery case when I'm working in cardiothoracy. He said, no, no, you have to come and see her. And they just literally pulled me in the ward. I went there and I was really surprised that this young lady was very ill. She was cyanose, that is blue. She had feeble pulse. And on examination, I found she had peritonitis in her abdomen. I talked to the senior resident on duty, who was a friend of mine. And he said, you know, the consultant in charge of this patient has just seen the patient half an hour back. And he has asked me to continue with non-operative. I said, you know, this is not right. Something is wrong. And this patient requires urgent surgery, otherwise we will lose her. I said, why don't you phone up the consultant again? He was scared. He said, no, I won't phone up. So then I picked up the phone and phoned the head of the surgery department, general surgery, and told him about this patient. He told me, boss, you remain there, I am coming. And he also asked me to call the consultant in charge. We all assembled there within 10-15 minutes. The head of the department examined her and said, yes, she has got generalized peritonitis and she requires urgent operation. He asked the consultant to open up the case and he asked me to go and assist that surgeon. And we found she had intestinal tuberculosis with perforation of the gut and her abdomen was full of pus and fecal matter. The needful was done and she recovered. Like this, there are many, many cases which I remember. I remember an Italian gentleman, young gentleman, who was brought in Libya when I was the director of surgery. He has incised his neck in an attempt of suicide. When we explored the neck, we found his major veins were all traumatized and he was bleeding. His windpipe, that is trachea, was lacerated. Three-fourths of circumference was lost. From that opening in the windpipe, we put in the tracheostomy tube and we started surgery. I ligated all the blood vessels, etc. And we were able to pull out 
the patient. After he was all right, when he was going back to Italy, I asked him, are you going to commit suicide again? He said, Doc, you are joking. I had done this for a girl who had cheated me. I can get dozens of bored good looking doctors. I will never commit suicide anymore. So like this, there are so many things in life which has taught me. But I was always very hard work, very conscientious, very honest, because I was working in an atmosphere where things were different. In PJ also, I was the chairman of Institute Functions Committee. I was chairman of Cultural Committee. I produced at least six full-length plays, enacted them, and put them on the stage for people. So much so that on one of our annual days, Mr. Shankaranand, who was the union health minister, came and he insisted with my director that he would come to attend our annual day only if we have an annual day cultural program in the night. I used to do a lot of things. I was involved as a joint medical superintendent for procurement of all the equipment. I was administrative in charge of emergency work. I was in charge of transport, drugs, and everything. But at the same time, I was participating in our professional organizations also. Right from the very beginning, I had joined Association of Surgeons of India, which has more than 35,000 surgeons as their life member. I was the only person from PGI ever to become the Gordon Council member of this association. And later on, I became national president of this association. Nobody from PGI in its history of 75 years have got any position in this association. I also became president of Indian Association of Surgical Gastroenterology, also president of Chandigarh Surgical Society. I used to attend at least 20 to 25 conferences every year, crisscrossing India and delivering lectures of continuing medical education, instruction course, declamation contests, and workshop and all. I used to demonstrate operations in conferences. As a matter of fact, I was very much interested in modifying procedures, doing something which people call innovations, etc. Like in breast cancer, I was the first person to start breast can conservation surgery to salvage or to retain the size of the breast. And in whole of North India, this was gradually followed and people have started. And this was because way back in 1985, I had done a small research to find out the psychosocial aspect of breast cancer. And we came to know that many of these ladies irrespective of their financial, educational status, when they lost the breast, they felt like committing suicide. And so I was convinced the Indian ladies are also very particular about their physical attributes. And breast happened to be an organ of grace and beauty for them. And since then, I have been undertaking breast conservation surgery. I have been also doing mini cholecystectomy. This was the era when people used to make a long incision of about 10 to 15 centimeters for taking out the gall's bladder with stones. I started making a small incision of three centimeters. Can you believe? People would not believe that the gallbladder could be removed from such a tiny incision. My teacher, Professor J.S. Gusral, who was heading the Department of Cardiothoracic Surgery, came and watched my full surgical procedure 
only to get convinced ki yes, this can be done in, from a three centimeter in C. Similarly, our director, Professor Pathak, came and saw when I was doing one of these mini cholecystectomy. I was the first one in PGI Chandigarh to do laparoscopic cholecystectomy through these multiple three holes, which has now become the technique of choice for removal of the gallbladder. I started with aspiration of breast abscess. Earlier, we used to make incision and drainage of the breast abscess, which will remain for at least one to two months and with aspiration treatment only and with antibiotic. I could tackle 90% of these patients. Similarly, I have done many, many newer things. Like I have done stapler hemorrhoidectomy. Only by stapler you can remove all the piles. I was the person who was using the staplers for surgical, and I went and demonstrated the use of staplers in pigs when to Amritsar, Patiala, Ludhiana, just to demonstrate how to use stapler to make the surgical procedure more easier and quicker. I was also participating in many of the social activities for our faculty members. I was president of PGI Faculty Association. I went to the court of law when all the pensioners were denied non-practicing allowance. We went and we got it back. I was the only person who, even now, I am fighting a case for the pensioners of PGI for enhancing our pension amount. And the case is going. I was never scared of anything. Life must have been so interesting for you, doctor. What were some of your learnings? I learned the importance of hard work, hard work, nothing but hard work, honesty and time management. I published many books. This is the latest book of breast cancer that has been launched on 15th of October by Honorable Gardner of Punjab. This is a reference book dealing with all aspects of breast cancer. I have written my memories also. This has my autobiography and deals on every aspect right from my school age to my superannuation. This is the book on cancer as a whole. Because while treating the patients of cancer diseases, I found that our patients have been coming to us in a very late stage. And the outcome is very poor if the cancer patient comes late. Can you believe that in breast cancer, our mortality or survival is not even 20 to 30 percent, whereas in America, Canada, Australia, UK, the survival is more than 90%. It is all because we start treating patients of stage 3 and 4. This book has been published by Government of India and is available in many languages, in Hindi, English, seven regional languages. I have been always supported by my family. My wife and my three daughters have never made undo demands from me. We have been passing through a very simple life. We are not members of any club, never went to five-star hotels for meals. We never asked for foreign trips. We were always interested in studies, in cultural activities. My daughters have enacted Ravindranath's ballets, stage plays in television, in Tagore Theatre of Chandigarh. And these things have kept us very happy. As a matter of fact, I always thought a support by a family 
is very much needed. If I do not have a support of my family, then I will be very unhappy. I will not be able to devote my time, energy in looking after the patient, in doing research and innovations, in publishing papers. Another important thing that I always did was spreading the message of cancer awareness. I have written more than 100 art health education articles in newspapers and magazines. I have been delivering lectures on cancer awareness in schools, colleges, associations, and clubs, just to increase the awareness of people so that they can come to us at an early stage. I have published more than 120 professional articles in national and international journals. I have won many, many awards, three national awards, out of which two have been Dr. B. C. awards for teaching and one for research. I have also won the award of communication from Department of Science and Technology. I think I should not waste my time in unnecessary things. I should be doing something for the society, for our people. I got everything done from PGI. They have looked after me. They have treated me and my family very nicely. And that is one of the reasons that I have been able to become a successful surgeon and God has been very kind to me. Even at the age of 82, I'm operating upon difficult cases. Based on whatever you shared about your life, I want you to dissect that a little bit about how, uh, first and foremost, how did you get such a wholesome student life? Was it because at that time, social media wasn't there to distract students? Because you were good in studies, you were good in sports, you were good in dramatics, everything. You lived such a full life as a student and you're such a decorated surgeon as you moved career wise. And it is not one area, but many areas that you have worked around. So how did you end up getting a piece of every slice of uh, what life has to offer to all of us? How did you manage to do that? No, this was the management was, see, in PJ only. Hmm. I was lucky to have teachers like Professor Santok Singh Anand, I.C. Pathak, B.L. Talwar, Professor C. Balakrishnan, V.K. Saini, and all. All of these people, they were very hardworking, honest. And we used to blindly follow them. I remember my time when I used to work continuously for even 70 to 72 hours. And we used to say, eat whatever you get, eat whenever you have time. And I never used to waste my time in faltu things. That is, I would never go to the hotels, restaurants, going here, there, and wasting. Either I was studying or playing or creating drama. The management of time was the most important. But the most important thing was I had these people whom I used to follow. Follow them blindly. And they were, you will not believe Early years, when we were there in PGI Chandigarh, people used to come to me. People used to get vats of notes asking us, please do the operation early, do the operation properly, because that was the thing which was prevalent all over Punjab. But what my teachers used to do and what I also started doing, if any of these relations would come to bribe us, we will say, okay, okay, okay. And next day the patient would be discharged from the hospital. Okay. And very soon, within six months, it was known everywhere 
to the doctors of PGI could not be bribed. Recommendations would not work. As a matter of fact, it can harm you. And that was one of the reasons that we were very, really, very, very hardworking until now. The interest in breast cancer, is it because the number of cases were high? What drew you into that space of uh, breast cancer, doctor? And uh, all the you've even written books on it, which means you have seen quite a lot of cases. What drew you to it? Breast cancer is spreading like a wildfire. Breast cancer is supposed to be the commonest cancer in females in India also. Although earlier it was thought that breast cancer is not very common in India and it was the cervical cancer which was number one. In Western countries, one in eight ladies is supposed to develop breast cancer during her lifetime. In India, it is one in 20 ladies will develop breast cancer during her lifetime. And as you know, the population of India is so much that the total number of cases is enormous. Breast cancer is also very, very controversial. Anything that you want to do, either for investigation or for treatment, can be controversial. And these patients of breast cancer were not treated by anyone. Like cancer of the cervix or uterus is seen by gynecologists, but there were no separate people for breast cancer. Of course, now it has come, there are many units have come out, which are now known as breast cancer units. So I became interested right in the very beginning when I found that there were so many cases and these ladies were not properly treated. So I started looking after these patients of breast cancer. Okay. When you look back and see how, how you set out on a journey, there are very few people as fortunate as you who decide you're going to become a doctor and in that you're going to specialize in surgery and you move in that direction. Life also makes it easy for you because you're consistently working hard and uh, getting whatever you're setting out to get. What would you like to tell uh, parents especially, because today the aspirations are more from the parental side rather than the student side, on how a child can balance it all and have it all? As I said, I was very hard working right from the very beginning. And we belong to a family which were very allied to hard working, studies, and cultural activity. I, earlier I thought ki I can join civil services. I thought I could join Indian Air Force as a pilot, but then my father wanted that one of his sons should become a doctor. And he told me, and I knew ki if I go, there and I was good with my hands. So I thought yeah, I can be a surgeon. Of course, one of my brothers became an Air Force pilot. Two of them went and joined the management courses and all that thing. So it was not very difficult for me. And I had good training in PGI. I had very good training of surgery in UK, like Royal Postgraduate Medical School, in Sloan Catering Cancer Institute in New York. I had very good training. I could have gone anywhere of these foreign countries in the hospital, but I never wanted. I did not tell you that in 1990 or before that, when I was an additional professor in surgery at PGI, there was an advertisement for the recruitment to the post of professor in surgery at Ames, New Delhi. I applied for it because I had not yet become professor in Chandigarh. There were 27 candidates. The interview was held in Ames, New Delhi. One week after the interview, I was informed by one of my friends in Ames that I have been selected 
as the professor of surgery in Ames. He also advised me that I should come to Delhi, pull some political strings, otherwise they would change the ranking of the selected candidate. I told him very clearly, look, I have been selected on merit and I do not want to pull any string. I did not go. Two or three months later, because the recommendations of the selection committee has to be ratified by the governing body of AIMS. It was done and I was told that one of the local professors of AIMS has superseded and has been selected and he has also joined AIMS as the professor of surgery. And my name was not. Then I said, I'm coming and I went to Delhi met Mr. Potedar, the union health minister. He told me very frankly that there was so much of pressure from above that I had to alter the ranking. He also told me that as he was the president of PGI Chandigarh, he will compensate me. I told him very clearly, sir, I do not want any compensation. I want my right Thank you very much. And I walked out of his office. Next day, I went, met my friend C.K. Mahajan, who was a practicing lawyer in Delhi High Court. And the case was launched in the High Court. The case went on for almost six or eight months. And there were very eminent lawyers like Soli Surabji, Gopal Subramaniam, Kapil Sibbal, who were representing Ames and that surgeon. And luckily, the Delhi High Court gave the orders in my favor. Ames went to Supreme Court in an appeal. Supreme Court, within five minutes, they quest their request, and I was made professor of surgery. I went, came back to PJ Chandigarh. By then, I had become professor of surgery in PJ also. I asked them to send me on deputation to AIMS. Then, AIMS. But Mr. Furtidas told me that either I should get the job of AIMS or remain in PJ. I again went to the high court in Chandigarh. Within three minutes, I was permitted to go on deputation. So this is the way I have lived my life. I was never scared of anything. I went and joined AIMS, but after two or three months, I submitted my resignation over there. The director of AIMS said, why you are going? You are, we are so happy that you have come. All the faculty members, they wanted me to remain there. But I said, you know, I like PJ Chandigarh and I'm going back. Even my family, members of my family did not want to live in Delhi. They wanted to live in Chandigarh, although most of them have now left Chandigarh. <laughs> so, this is one of the ways which, and I came back and then I spent all my years in Chandigarh. Wow. Okay. So when you are now in this reflection space, doctor, the pandemic in the last two and a half years took all of us into reflection. Many of us went into a pause mode because we realized we were on a treadmill. All we needed to do is switch off the button and get off and pause. So a lot of uh, reflections told us what life is about. But for you, did the last two and a half years shift anything about how you reflected on life? Yeah, it was very unfortunate. Lots and lots of people have succumbed to COVID. They have died in lakhs. All the businesses has come down. I had also stopped seeing patients, operating upon the patients for almost two years. Because I did not want to get the disease myself. And all these patients were also at the threshold of a yeah. disease. All the hospitals have been converted 
into COVID hospital. It really made a lot of changes in our lives that I was also not operating or seeing a patient except on online. So it has done a lot of damage. But the damage is more to younger people, not to people like me, because younger people did not have any good training, could not write papers, could not see many things during the last two or two and a half years. It was really very tragic. But now things are coming up. Like, as I said, I have also started operating again, although not with that pace as earlier on. I think a lot of progress in the development of medical profession as a whole. So many procedures would have been invented, modified. So many drugs would have come up. So much of research would have taken place during these last two and a half years. Many of these young people they have just wasted their two years looking after only the COVID patients. Because even the surgical teams were put on duty to look after these COVID patients so that there are many doctors looking after the ICUs, etc. Yeah. And uh, we are now in the fag end of the conversation, doctor. So three life lessons that you would like to leave us with that helped you become who you have become, one of the most respected authors, surgeons, uh, and the first laparoscopic surgeon, you brought in minimal invasion surgery, breast cancer. Uh, there are so many aspects about how you lived life for you. So three life lessons that you'd like to leave us with. First is to gather knowledge from all sources, from your college, from your teachers, attending conferences, attending workshops, because what the mind does not know, eyes don't see. This is the first and most important thing which I thought was to gather the knowledge. Second is the hard work, hard work, nothing but hard work. Honesty and energy to work. This is the second. And third is the family support. Support by your family, by your dear and near ones, by your friends by your colleagues. Because unless you have got support, unless you work in a teamwork, you will not be able to. Because surgery is again a question of teamwork. And as I said earlier, the games and sports teach you the importance of teamwork. And I was very happy that I used to play so many games and so learn all the teamwork, how to work and support others, how to help others. And this is, these are the three, gather knowledge, do hard, honest work and support by your family, friends, colleagues and all. Really beautiful, simple yet profound life lessons, Dr. Bose. Carl Jung had said, medicines cure diseases, but only doctors can cure patients. And I think it is doctors like you who prove that statement as completely true. The last word I will say, okay, what are the characteristics of a surgeon? Okay. In my autobiography book, mm -hmm. I have given what are the characteristics that a surgeon should have. He should have eyes of an owl, Okay. He should have the hands of a lady. He should have the heart of a lion, smelling power of a dog, and he should have the stamina of a donkey. These characteristics make a surgeon successful. <laughs> Tongue-in-cheek sense of humor in place, Dr. Bose. <laughs> really an honor talking to you and listening to your life story, inspirational to the core. And I think it's doctors like you that make the profession so noble even today. Thank you so very much for your time and sharing your entire life with us. Stay blessed, doctor, and continue to inspire.
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. With that, we come to the end of this weekly quest of You and I with Rashmi Shetty. Do let us know if you know people who make the world beautiful. Write in to rashmi dot the third i at gmail dot com. That is R A S H M I dot T H E T H I R D E Y E at gmail dot com. Come. Let's explore this amazing world together, both you and I.